Well, hello and welcome everyone back to Shell Black Whiteboard. I am Shell Black, president and founder of shellblack.com and Salesforce MVP. And we are going to tackle a huge topic, security, security in Salesforce. And we're going to make this a two-part series because it's a big topic. And the way I'm going to do this is the first part, I'm going to introduce a lot of the concepts of how security works, the levers that you have at your disposal to set up security, and then we're going to go through, in our second installment of this, a use case. We are going to take a sales organization, we're going to run through some problems that we have to solve to illustrate how you use the, that toolkit that Salesforce provides to you to set up some, some real security requirements. So to get started, let's look at some of the levers that we have at our disposal to set up security in Salesforce. And first of all, if you're a small organization, you may have no security, and that's, that's fine. There are bigger organizations where you need to start hiding stuff and restricting access and record visibility, and so security is something that you'll need to learn, especially as a Salesforce administrator, how to set up. So let's go through some of the major parts of the toolkit. I am going to start off with something called the OWDs, which stands for Organizational Wide Defaults and Security. And what the OWDs do is by object, say leads, accounts and contacts, maybe cases, opportunities, or custom objects, it sets the baseline security for that object. And there's three tiers that you can set. The default is open, which is really no security. It means everybody can see everything. It's a big love fest. No, one, no, no concerns there. There's read, which means I could search and see the record, but the edit button is gone. And there is also the setting called private. And I like to say shields up, kind of like the old Star Trek, shields up when you're in private mode, because then you can't look over the fence and it restricts uh, visibility. Thing to remember about OWDs, or organizational wide defaults, is that is how you ratchet down security and how you make something more secure. Use other methods to grant access or open things up, like sharing rules and, and those type of things. So it's only used to restrict, it's the baseline access. If you have to hide records from one person, one user in the organization, you're in a private model. You have to lock everything down to hide records from somebody and then use things like uh, sharing rules or whatever it might be to grant access back to the rest of the organization. So if you have to put one person in the penalty box and make sure they can't see their neighbor's stuff, you're private for that object, whatever that object might be and then you use sharing rules to grant access back. So let's assume that we are going to a private model. In our illustration, we're going to be in the context of really just accounts and contacts to keep it simple. And if we put something on lockdown and make it private, that means that people that are at the same level cannot see information. So I should stop right there. Let's talk about the role hierarchy, because this is where, where the role hierarchy gets in, into play. So the role hierarchy, and I have different levels here. I have an executive bucket, a sales VP, sales ops, and salespeople. The role hierarchy is not necessarily your org chart, your organizational chart. It is really a way to roll up information to grant access. The thought is, if you are higher up in the role hierarchy, you, by the nature of your position higher in the food chain, should have the rights to look down and inherit and see the information owned by users below you. So let's take uh, sales operations. They are above these sales groups and the nature of the fact that they're on top of these folks. Salesforce assumes if you're a manager of another user or higher in the role hierarchy, you need to be able to have access to the, the records to the folks below you. So that role hierarchy is granting access up. Um, you also inherit uh, record access or inherit um, privileges of users below you. So if you had a special record access privilege for sales operations, the sales VP who is above that person will inherit any privileges you or extra access you give this person is inherited by their boss. The thought is that, again, the fact that they're a manager of that individual, they should have the same rights as the folks below them. So. Things to remember, not necessarily your org chart, it's really for record access and you inherit uh, privileges of the folks below. If we were in a private model, uh, in this instance, and we th threw accounts and contacts 
using our OWDs through that into a private setting, we're really drawing shields up between our users. So I'm drawing shields or a barrier between our folks. So without any other access or sharing rules, this salesperson is not going to be able to see this salesperson's information. This salesperson is not going to be able to see this person's salesperson sales information or accounts and contacts. They're only going to see records that they own. And record ownership is kind of key to that. Record ownership, by default, allows you to see a record. If you're the owner of the record, great. If you are the manager or higher in the role hierarchy, you inherit that. But if you notice that I have a line here, so people in the same role, this sales operations person cannot see records owned by this sales operations person. This sales VP cannot see records at the same level of the hierarchy. So just like we have shields up between these salespeople, we have a shields up between these sales vice presidents as well. Executive folks can see everything because they're the highest part of the food chain and by nature where they are in the role hierarchy, they can see all the records below them. Okay, so we've talked about when we lock stuff down, how does that impact record access? How do you start granting access back to, to folks? And that is through sharing, and sharing is um, can't restrict, it only grants, it's the opposite of your OWDs. And it allows you to um, give groups of users or certain criteria of records access uh, to be visible to other users. Lots of ways to do that. You can do that through sharing rules. You can do that through manual sharing. So if you're the record owner, there's a share button on the record that you can push um, and grant access to different users, just one off uh, using the share button. Um, account teams, you can establish account teams and say that this person is the inside person, inside salesperson of this other person by that nature because they're in the account team or maybe they do contracts or proposals. That person needs access to these people's records because they're part of the account team. Not going to get too, too deep into that. But sharing is how you grant access back to a, a, a larger population. OWDs is how you restrict. Okay, so we talked about how the role hierarchy affects record access, OWDs, and sharing. Let's talk about, as an administrator, troubleshooting. Because once you start locking things down and you're doing these crazy sharing rules and granting access, it gets complicated very quickly. And someone's going to ask you, can this person see this? Are they allowed to see that? And you're going to need a way to test this. You need to go, when you're setting up security, you're going to need a way to go in and validate that you've got your sharing model and your rules in place and they're working correctly. Two quick tips. You can open a case, and this is a fairly recent feature of Salesforce, and there's a blog post on my website about how to open this case to be able to log in as any user in the system. So basically the old school way is you have to get a hold of that user, tell them that you need them to grant access to their administrator. No longer. Um, you can go in org wide and have the login button and the user panel for any user by opening up a case. We'll give you the link in the transcription of this blog post on how to do that. That is awesome because then you can log in as them and search and just see if you can get to that record. That's, that's very helpful. If they do get to a record that you didn't think they should be able to get to, here's the second part of the troubleshooting. There is a sharing button that will appear on the page layout, and if it's not, check your page layout to make sure it's there. But when you put an object into private security with your OWD, a sharing button becomes available. If you are questioning why a user can see something, click that sharing button. Then there's going to be a link to expand the list, which gives you the list of all the users, and there's going to be a link with a question mark called why. Click that Y button and it will tell you what is granting access to that user. Is it the role hierarchy? Are they part of a group? Uh, is it a part of a manual share? Are they part of an account team? That will explain why that person can see that record. So troubleshooting, login as any user, and the sharing button, super, super helpful to make sure you can validate and explain to somebody else why or why can't somebody access a record. Okay kind of wrapping up this topic, kind of the, what I'm going to call the perils of private. So the perils of private is if you have to lock down your org using your OWDs and, may, and put something in a private mode, you risk having duplicate records. When people search for something, they won't know it already exists in the database. 
if this is a private org and this salesperson has the account Acme and this person is searching for Acme and there's no sharing between the two, this person's going to think Acme doesn't exist and it's going to create a net new account. As an administrator, that becomes a headache because now you have a duplicate record in the database. So I'm calling that the perils of private. Really talk to your management team of whether that benefit of being private outweighs some of the data management concerns of duplicate records. There's a balance there. It, from a business standpoint, it, it might be required, but just realize you've now created this other monster of duplicate records. And the other peril of that is what I'm calling collisions. So what will happen is, is because this person does not realize that someone else owns this account, they're going to start calling on that account and they're going to be a collision. You're going to have two salespeople potentially calling on the same client. That could be embarrassing for your company. I'm calling it a collision, but those are the perils of being in a private model. Okay, a lot of stuff to take in. Barely scratch the surface of uh, the big levers of the toolkit you have to set up security. To kind of get this message home, we're going to have a second installment to this where we're going to take a real life example and we're going to set up security, kind of virtual with our whiteboard, um, with some real use cases that kind of really um, drive the, the points home of all these levers that you have at your disposal. Uh, if you would like to give some feedback of how we're doing or maybe some topic suggestions, I want to make sure you know how to reach out to us. A couple of ways you can do that. I'm on Twitter at shell underscore black. Don't forget the underscore. And you can always email us at whiteboard at shellblack.com. We'd love to hear from you and we'll see you soon.